Good morning. It is my great pleasure to be here. Uh, before I start today's uh, presentation about 5G, uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, the organization committee for inviting me to visit France and have this opportunity to exchange ideas with you. And I also want to thank the audience for being here. I think it's a this time is precious, and how we can interactively exchange ideas to find the pathway to success, this is the purpose of this workshop. So my talk title is about a perspective on 5G for e-health. And I'm going to do in the following is to really bring into historical perspective how the 5G come about and what are the unique features and functions 5G can provide. Then as uh, uh, someone working in university as a researcher, I try to explore this a new function and feature 5G can provide in the health area and try to really look ahead what kind of e-health we can really provide and provide newer service, bring in newer values to the health industries. And then along the way, I will show you some of the video. Um, I cannot produce those videos. So I capture from some of the telco providers as well as uh, the technology developers to share with you. In a way, they also see the similar visions. So um, let me start with the historical review. We are at a very, very interesting time of the history. Right now, we are in so-called the fourth generation of industrial revolutions. And we have gone through three industrial revolutions. The first one, as everyone remembers, is about 1782, when we came up with the steam engines. How that really bring up the productivity and industrialize European. And in the second industrial revolution is at down of the 20th century, 1900s. And as uh, you may recall the fourth Model T, how they come up with assembling line as a way to be more efficient way to produce a product. And Edison bring in the electricity to mass. Every home now has access to the electricity to do work. And in the 50s, as a result of microelectronics in semiconductors, we have brought in a lot of processing power. And we, in the last so many years, we look at automation and control. And that is how we will further improve the productivity. Now, in the fourth generation of industrial revolution, it is known as data revolutions. So in this conference, we talk a lot about big data, machine learning. So data become the new currency. How we can use the data as a way to improve operation efficiency, to improve productivity, to bring in the new values. That is the fourth generation of industrial revolutions. How can that be done? It's based on so-called, in academic term, cyber physical systems. Later on, I'm going to tell you what this cyber physical system is about and why 5G will play a major role in this uh, cyber physical system. But before I do that, I want to bring to your attention how the industrial revolution will impact our life. This is uh, at the dawn of the uh, 20th century, 1900s, on the street of uh, New York City. You can see only one automobile car. But within 10 years, 1910, you can only see horse carriage. And this is the revolution we are talking about. In the fourth generation of industrial revolution, by using data, we will see this overwhelming change in our lifestyles. The way we are going to live, work, and play, everything will be changed. So we need to be ready for it. And in the health, industry, usually we always talk about, from the IT perspective, we are a little bit behind. So today's presentation, I try to bring you up front 
what opportunity we can really take advantage of IT infrastructure, these innovations, and see how we can be ahead of the game. So the next one I'm going to share with you is what really bring this uh, fourth generation revolution about. So what we have seen is the three major developments. The first one is related to extreme miniaturization of uh, semiconductor and electronic devices. Probably many of you have heard about Moore's Law. Moore's Law, as uh, Gordon Moore, he was uh, the uh, CEO and chairman of the board in Intel. And in the 60s, he predicted the density of the memory will double every 12 months. That is so-called uh, the Moore's Law. As a result of uh, <clears throat> that Moore, uh, Moore's Law, we have seen the way we are able to bring down the cost in processing power, in memory density, and so on. One example is, think about in the 70s, when I was a student, <clears throat> how we use a computer. One mainframe computer, we punch the paper card. And one computer, the processing power is very limited. But back then, we said that is such a great computing resource to our studies. But today, think about in your smartphone, that microprocessors has a million times better processing power than the mainframe computer we use in the 70s. And the cost of mainframe computer back in 70, it was about $4 million. But the microprocessor in your pockets is only cost less than $2.50. So that is the capability in your fingertip in terms of processing power. Processing power translates to intelligence. And the second thing is related to the global telecommunication infrastructure. Everywhere you visit, sizing, you are connected. Right? So this is, a, again, is related to the microelectronic, but at the same time, because of the communication technology right on this semiconductor bandwagon, we are able to bring down the cost, make communication affordable. And lastly, and most importantly, we have seen is a massive acceptance of a technology. Today, when you see your grandparents play with iPhone or iPad, you won't be surprised. But think about in 80s or 90s, computer is only limited to computer scientists or engineers. And because of acceptance of the technology allow us to really explore their use. And that really helped us to set the new stage to explore the new capability and how we can bring them to the practical use. <clears throat> so um, as a result of that, we see is time are changing. As uh, you may recall, in the uh, early 21st centuries, it's a dot-com age, and most of the data were generated by and for people. For example, we do a Google search. Through the search process, data were generated. Google knows what you're looking for, and they will use that to advertise what you're looking for. And then we have seen is the social media, right? And all the data were generated by and for people. So we categorize that age as internet of a people for the connection of peoples. Today, you have heard a lot about Internet of a thing, IoT. In this conference, we talk a lot about that topic. So Internet of a thing, the data were generated for and by things. And here is one example for the smart home. All the appliances, electronics, they are all connected. And we know the every device usage. And there is a way to really bring the efficiency in terms of controlling their turn on and off. Right, so this is a, one example of Internet of Things. Now think about what will be tomorrow's <coughs> the value. So for tomorrow, what we see is the interaction between thing and people, the so-called Internet of a Service and the values, especially in this wireless connected world. 
And in this case, you can imagine how human can work with the thing in a way to bring the new service and new values. And under that <clears throat> internet of a service, you will see is there will be smart cities. And probably you heard a lot news about the smart cities, how the citizen can interact with the governments in bringing up some of the issues. And you can have the smart hospital, right, and optimize its operations. And how, for example, the ambulance, when you deliver uh, some uh, patient to the hospital, maybe you can coordinate with the smart city in terms of traffic light controls. Right? So there are many ways to think about how you dissect the lifeline support system within our ecosystem and allow the data to exchange in a way we can bring in more efficiency and make our life quality much better. And that is uh, the tomorrow we will see that interaction. It's going to happen and happen right now. So now we will ask ourselves a question, how does this one really can work? So this is a going back to the original questions for the fourth generation of the industrial revolution, so-called the cyber-physical system. So you look at the cyber-physical system, it consists of uh, three major components. The first one we know is as edge, at the edge of the cloud. Edge means it's the interface between the physical world and the digital world, and that defines the edge. And edge device, its own function is try to do the following. It should be able to collect the data as needed. So it's really about the data acquisitions, how to acquire the data, and also serve as a way when there are information coming back, it can act on behalf of the feedback information to really interact with the physical world. So a lot of uh, edge device is classified as an IoT device edge device, internet thing, because it has the capability to acquire the data. And remember, in this generation, the next generation of an internet of a service is a thing and people. Human become mobile sensors, also as a mobile effectors respond to the signals, but as well as the things. And that interaction bring in the new value, new service. And in between, then the other side, on the right-hand side, is the cloud. In this conference, we talk a lot about the cloud computing and how we use the big data to do the data mining and to do the machine learning. So this is a really riding on the success of computing power available through the, the downscaling of the semiconductor chips uh, uh, dimensions. So in between the cloud and edge device is a data transferring mechanism and how to transfer the data from the edge to the cloud and it is done by some kind of communication devices. So in the future generation, we see this will be so-called the 5G, 5G communications. Since this conference is about e-health, I made the equivalent analogy between the electronics and the human being. Think about edge, it's like a human five sense. We can hear, we can see, we can touch, we can smell, we can taste. And that is the edge functions. Try to collect the data of use to us. At the same time, collect the data human cannot see, like infrared or the, uh, the ultrasound we cannot hear. Then the communication to transfer the data is equivalent to human's uh, strength central uh, nerve systems communicate all the data through the nerve systems. But only difference is this is a mobile central nervous system. It can be reconfigured on demands. And the cloud is equivalent to our brain. It does a lot of computing functions for us. Right? So the way you can imagine is this really create a so-called the uh, uh, closed loop systems Imagine that I am now going to grab this uh, pointers. So what is the function I have to perform? First, my eye is my sensor telling my hands to move forwards. And 
Then my eyes, seeing my hands moving forward and send the signal, say, you can stop now because the signal back to the brain, brain is doing some processing and telling me I can grab these pointers. And when I grab it, because of the pressure sensor, I send back the signal, say, don't grab too hard, otherwise you're going to break it. Right? And that is the feedback system we have created for our society. And it can be done because we have the capability to acquire the data, to transfer the data, and to process the data. By processing the data, we convert that data into information. But information is not really actionable intelligence. And through the data mining, machine learning, we convert that information into actionable intelligence. That's how we can act. And we can make system more efficient. So now that's a focus on in between the edge and cloud, 5G systems. <clears throat> so you think about the 5G. Now is how we can really think about the um, hardware system to interact with edge and make it more efficient, more capable in performing its data acquisitions or to be more effective way to deliver the actionable intelligence. Or you, you can think of the other way, how the 5G can interact with the cloud computing to provide more resource for computation purpose. It's, it's not just the hardware, it's a combination of hardware and software to really broaden its capability. That is what 5G is trying to do. So under the 5G visions, what we anticipate is it will be high speed compared to our current use of cell phone, so-called 4G LTE. It will have uh, the uh, data rate, guaranteed data rate, about 100 megabit per second. And at the peak, it's going to be greater than 10 gigabit per second. Right, so maybe those are the term, looks like it's uh, foreign. I'm going to explain to you later on what that means. And second thing is, because of uh, this uh, new uh, setup in the 5G, it will have very low latency, less than one millisecond. The latency means a delay. Think about when we are making a closed loop system, the goal is try to do the control. And for performing the control function, there is certain time delay. When you use a 4G LTE system, the current cell phone, the time delay is about 100 millisecond, 0.1 seconds. And when you get down to the 5G, it will be 1 millisecond, 0.001 seconds. So that opens up a lot of capability. If you need to do real-time control, now this is a, the technology will be available to you. And lastly, when, because of the way we are able to use the 5G to have a more channel capability, you can do the massive scale, deployment for like a massive IoT and so on. So now let's look at <clears throat> the 5G, how it compare the evolutions. Shown here is the three generation of the technology in wireless. 3G is uh, back in the uh, uh, early 2000s, 2001. That is uh, when we come up with the 3G. And here is to put into a perspective when how long will it take to download the two hour long Guardian of a Galaxy? It would take about 26 hours in 3G in 2001. Right? And that's equivalent to a, a, the fly from New York to a Sydney, including layovers, 26 hours. And in today, 4G, at the peak of 100 megabit per second, 4G came about in 2009. So for download such a movie, it would take about 6.5 minutes. Right? So typical, that is a long a quick time, catch up on the Facebook. That is the time we consume to really download the movie. When it comes to the 5G with a peak speed of 10 gigabit per second, basically ask, is it download yet? It's, it's about 3.6 seconds. That is the speed, that is the capability 5G will provide you with. Right now, you, you can think about, wow, I have such a great bandwidth in 
pushing the data in and out, and what else can I do? And especially I have a lot of control in the latency, very low latency, what else we can do? So now let's look at how they can implement such a hardware in 5G. <clears throat> Showing here is a one example proposed by Verizon. And for the 5G installations, where are you going to have that box, like the Wi-Fi box at home? So the typical way we see is you have the light post. Light post, it has a built-in electricity. So what you can see here is on the light post, on the top of the light post, it has an antenna. Right? And because the way we're going to use a 5G, it will have a so-called dual band frequency in use. One is from three to six gigahertz. The other one is a millimeter wave frequency, 28 gigahertz. To deal with different frequency, you need to have a different way to design the antenna in order to have higher signal to noise ratio and to have a longer propagation distance. So this is antenna is one of the innovation in 5G design. And below the antenna, this is uh, the electricity, so the building with uh, the battery as a backup. Then what we have is all the, because of the way we are using a millimeter wave fre fre frequency for the uh, 5G, it has rather limited range to cover the signals. So typical way to construct such a 5G cell tower, you need to have repeater every 100 meters. So every 100 meters you will see the, the 5G installations. Right. That means they, it will cost a lot of money to bring up the infrastructure, so it will take some time. And below the, uh, uh, the um, uh, power supply is uh, the, uh, the fibers. How you connect all the, uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the hub is through the fiber system, and that is built out upon the existing fiber connectivity in 4G and so on, right? And the fiber itself will give you the connectivity in the range from 10 to 400 gigabit per second, right? So that's huge bandwidth uh, for transferring the data as a backbone communications. And below that, you have the network device and also the local processing power. So you can imagine now, if we are going to have a 5G system installed in, uh, in this city, in every meet, 100 meter to 200 meter, you will see is there will be a hub, a box, and installed on the light post. And each box has a huge processing power. Now we have a distributed data center, just like inside the data center, I, I don't know if you visit any data centers, they are transferring data at a very high speed. Now it's distributed throughout the real space now. And allow you to utilize that capability to perform computation functions. And that is the 5G we'll be able to provide. So with that very brief discussion of the 5G system, let's try to be visionary. Think about what we can do with such a 5G new capability and features. The first one, I think is probably is uh, low hanging fruit, the wireless AR and VR, virtual reality, especially for medical education. Probably have seen those uh, virtual reality goggles. Currently, in order to handle such high data rate, you need to have connectors, all the cable connections. With the 5G, so-called fixed wireless access, now you can easily deploy such AR, VR systems. And second thing I think is uh, quite interesting is if we look back the histories, how the cell phone technology really take off is not because US. We have all the copper wire. There's no need to have a second phone. In reality, it was India and China, they were lack of infrastructure. So when you bring in a cell phone tower in every one mile within that regions, suddenly people have connectivity 
you can start making a phone call. You don't need to dig a trench to put in, lay down the fibers or coppers. So now I think about, there are many hospitals, probably they are relatively older generations, and how do you really bring in the information infrastructure to the hospital for the developing country or underdeveloped country, and suddenly they have the way to processing all the data available. And this is really a leapfrog solutions to use this most advanced 5G communication. They have a fiber ready, right? So when you bring that into the hospital, now you have the connectivity, you can collect the data and connect with the, the city, and you can do a lot of uh, uh, data management as well. Then in addition to those uh, two low hanging fruit, I think there are other opportunity. The first one is the internet of a health thing. Basically the way I see is with uh, the high data rate and low latency, now there is a way to provide holistic care service. service. And this is a really integration of medical device and the caregiver tailored for individual. Right? And right now the way we are, Providing the service is a one fit for all. And because of our capability of accessing the data of individuals' needs, now the service quality would be further improved. And the efficiency in providing such a service will be improved. And the area, the second area I see the opportunity is related to the data analytic. And currently, what we have heard about is uh, the cloud service, like Amazon, or Google, or IBM, and so on. And you have to, the cloud computing is located in specific locations. And with a 5G wireless, because it's a distributed throughout the physical space, now you have a distributed way of uh, using the cloud service. And you are able to really bring in that real-time computation power in the location of interest to you. And this is a really is a so-called mobile distribute data analytic and provide you with edge intelligence, and which cannot be done with current cloud computing service. And lastly is about the mission critical service like robotic surgery, uh, emergency uh, response, and human robot in the interaction and so on. So I'm going to show you some of the uh, movies. <clears throat> So this is really about the intelligent care. So to summarize what you just saw, the near term, what we see, the new service. This is point of care, integrated service. And this will provide you with physiological sensor data right, from the IOTs, and has image telemedicine and multiple specialists participating 
in making the decisions. And this is really on an integrated platform. So for the near term, this is a, can be done relatively easy with the capability of a 5G. Then think about what will be the futures. Here's one example I think maybe is doable. And it, for us, health and wellness are both important. Right? We like to live with a quality of life, and you have to be well enough. It don't, you don't want to just live long enough. So the way we can see here is for the wellness and the health, it should be patient-centric uh, service. So the first one is a high-touch wellness advising. Imagine if you are um, uh, someone try to really gain the wellness, you say, I want to exercise every day. And as we know, I'm the one example at the New Year's resolutions, I want to exercise after a few months, my motivation changed because work low is it getting up, right? So I, I will procrastinate not to go to the gym and so on. And think about with uh, the 5G, because we are all connected, now it's Say, uh, at the weekend, you go to the mountain and try to uh, run, do jog, jogging, right? So now with uh, the connectivity and with uh, all the physi physiological senses and with uh, the, the AI behind that, it can advise you, say, hey, you should push yourself harder, you should run faster, and if monitoring your health condition provides you with uh, feedback, say, hey, maybe you you push yourself too hard, slow down, take a rest. And basically, you will have the trainer beside you, anywhere, anytime, as a way to motivate you, say, hey, Paul, you haven't done enough, you should push yourself hardest. So this is the way we see is how we can gain from the advising through the connectivity to really become motivated to take care of ourselves. The second area we're looking at is, think about, for this generation, um, yesterday's talk uh, about the aging right, in the older uh, generations, everyone wants to age at home. Right? So then what is going to be the future hospital? To me, if most of people want to age at home, then the service for the care will come to home then what kind of uh, infrastructure are needed? So I think it's a Uber-like. Caregiving may come into new service. Right? You can imagine someone say, right now you look at uh, the, um, our parents, if they need to go to see a doctor to visit a hospital, what is the typical demand of our time? We will spend a few hours, take off, to take them to see the doctor, and take them back because they do not have that mobility. Right? And so Uber-like service is a caregiver because they are connected on demand. They can show up and they can really provide a service. If they have questions, anytime because it's connected, all the high data array allow them to have all the information and doctor can participate in making a decision. What is the next? And that kind of service, it may come up. So that's why I see is it's a very different way to think about now because of the connectivity and the capability 5G would be able to provide, the hospital and home probably become not very, the borderline become not clear, right? What, what would be the new service, a new business model? That's something we need to think about. <clears throat> so in the area of uh, the cloud computings, the 5G to empower edge computing, so what we ha have here is, this is a typical way uh, currently uh, for the 5G set up. So it's so-called, the, uh, at the center is uh, the core uh, network systems. And because the way we are able to uh, think about from the teleco company point of view, what will be the new business model for them to really harness this uh, revolution of 5G? they will view the network as a new service. Just like a software as a service. This is a network as a service. They can slice the network in many different ways, depending on the different usage. 
So by slicing the network, they can tailor it for security, for very flexible business model, or to deliver uh, the using software-defined network to deliver IoT or deliver the computation, virtualization of the, uh, the network for the computation purpose, so that it will give you a lots of a new way to utilize that distributed network for different usage. So with that, you will be able to gain these uh, edge computing functions and have a very low latency. So here's one example I think is with uh, this uh, edge computing, what we will do? Shown here is, think about, in most of the conference we attend, we worry about how the AI and robot is going to impact the mankind, right? So this is a, a worker in the factory floor, on the factory floor, and looking at this robot is coming, is robot coming to replace their job? And how would they re interact with the robot? So this is what we see. We see the capability of the network and the processing power we have. And now the robot will have the intelligence because of the connectivity has very, very short response time within a millisecond to guide us through the process. And that is the way I can see it's improving the uh, uh, occupation, uh, 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 the uh, uh, safeties. So uh, in terms of robotic surgery, shown here is on the top, is our current robotic surgery using a Da Vinci. It's a one doctor and one practitioner to perform the, uh, the uh, surgery. And in the future, because of this uh, connectivity and the bandwidth and low lat latency, now you can have a multiple specialists participate in making that decision in surgeries. And this is uh, the new capability we ambition will come to the age. <clears throat> Here is uh, one example. So here we have a robotic finger that it is able to detect a hard tissue uh, within a soft tissue sample. Um, this is necessary because in minimally invasive surgery or in robotic surgery, doctor has lost the sense of touch. And if we could replace one of the robotic arms or the tools that the doctor is using in the human body uh, with one of these robotic fingers, then um, <coughs> the doctor can uh, detect where the heart nodule is and remove it um, better. So we have combined this uh, robotic finger with this haptic glove here, and we have made them talk to each other so we can control the movements of the, of the finger by applying some gestures. Like this, I can move it forward. And then uh, when the robotic finger uh, detects the hard nodule, it will send a, a, a spike of vibration to, to the glove so I can feel it, and I can go backwards uh, like this. So the motivation of including this and putting it uh, within a communications network is to scale the remote diagnosis and intervention up and not be, no longer be uh, geographically limited and be able to perform remote robotic surgery. So we have combined also uh, different camera views with the tactile information and we have three different flows that are going through the network. Uh, we have this closed view camera, uh, a wide angle view camera, and the tactile remote control. So these flows have the very different quality of service requirement, and they all need to be treated independently. Uh, so we have isolated the different flows uh, with a software defined network, and we are able to treat their quality of service independently. Uh, so, for example, I can send information to the controller like this and I am no longer able to satisfy the quality of service of this camera, but I can still move the robot uh, backwards and forwards and I can still have the other camera view. So basically we can do that uh, because we have isolated the different flows and we can still uh, ensure the quality of service of the other services, which is basically the definition of slicing.
So that movie is trying to show you is uh, by using uh, the 5G network. Now there's a way to uh, really uh, use, utilizing the virtual reality with uh, the sensor technology. Now the doctor can perform remote surgery, can perform remote surgery. And this is really taking robotic surgery into the next uh, frontier. New consumer trends of the digital era will drive new services and applications, giving rise to lucrative business opportunities. New and immersive experiences will need a breadth of connectivity options that provide high bandwidth and low latency, with the advent of 5G driving even more interactive, multimedia and collaborative services. Integrated and real-time digital health services is an area ripe for disruption, having the ability to profoundly improve people's lives and well-being as well as increase operational efficiencies and safety across the healthcare sector. Patient healthcare and the survival of accident victims in the critical Platinum 10 window will be vastly improved with 5G. It will provide the dynamic service agility and cloud networking capabilities for enhanced patient monitoring, improved diagnostics and video streaming to emergency room doctors to provide proactive care while still en route. Enabling all of this requires a new network approach. The network core must adopt a more agile, scalable and distributed architecture built with cloud-native design principles to deliver these life-enriching experiences. Services and applications will be directed to specific network slices that contain customized network functions with correctly dimensioned features for that service. Services will have the ability to reprogram the network core, influencing network policies to dynamically and optimally place network functions to ensure the best performance. A new 5G system feature called Service and Session Continuity ensures no loss of connectivity when the user plane connection is dynamically moved to ensure optimal performance. The digital city of the future will be equipped with technology that provides low latency, and high bandwidth capacity and real-time network intelligence to support vastly improved emergency service road safety. This technology will reduce accidents with the ultimate goal of eliminating fatalities. Nokia's Cloud Packet Core will enable service providers to move to an application-driven mode of operation, giving them the ability to monetize various multi-access technologies, including 5G, across healthcare and other market segments. Talk to us to find out more about Nokia's innovative Cloud Packet Core technology that provides multi-generational support and protects investment. So that um, a movie is trying to summarize what we just discussed. And you can visualize now with that cartoon and show you what it's capable of. So at this time, um, I want to wrap up uh, my presentation. Uh, I did not introduce you uh, where I come from. And I'm from uh, University of California, Irvine. And probably you haven't been to uh, California in Orange County. We are about 45 miles south of LA airports. And we are in between LA and San Diego. And this is the happiest place on earth. The reason for that is uh, we do have a Disneyland in Orange County. It's about 25 minutes drive from our campus. And in the winter time, this is about in the morning, one hour, you can go to the mountain for a ski trip. And in the afternoon, you can go to the beach for surfing. And at the night, if you're still full of energy, you can go to Disney to have uh, the uh, parade, to see the parade. So thank you very much uh, for this uh, presentation. <laughs>